Okay, let's carry on. In the previous episode, we finished the basic score. So I've updated the diagram. Mm -hmm. And we have this new layer now. Right, so this could be a new module. So I like this separation there with the vertical lines. It has its own space. This can very well be a different framework, as we mentioned last time. And no one has a dependency on this thing yet, but that's going to change soon. Yeah, we're going to have to decide who is going to invoke this function. Should it right. be the router? Should it be the presenter? Should it be the factory? Yeah. But I think we have all the pieces now to update the client to the new APIs mm -hmm. and remove all those references to deprecated types. Right. For yeah. example, the router can now implement the quiz delegate instead of the router protocol. And the presenter also references the deprecated result. Right. Perhaps the presenter can deal with score now. Okay, let's have a look at the presenter then. Results presenter. Oh, there it is. Right. It has a reference to the result because it needs to know the score and the answers. Yeah. But the answers now are just an array of tuples. Yes, exactly. So it's an array of tuples. Yes. Question. And what is the type here? Question of string. And the answers is an array of string. So we keep the right. same type information for the question and answer, mm -hmm. but we also need the score that the result provided before. Right. Here. Yeah. So what is the scoring type or a scorer? It's something that returns an integer. So we're going to compare the given answers by the user with the correct answers. Yes. And the correct answers also needs to match the type. Exactly. So the new APIs for the result presenter would be something like user answers, type answers. Mm -hmm. The correct answers is also of type answers. And we need a scorer function of type scorer. Yeah, exactly. And we need to migrate this API to this API. And how can we do this without breaking the clients? I think the, the first thing we can do is just create a new initializer there. Right. Because we want to keep the same behavior. Yes, exactly. We just want to change the type signatures, the interface. Yes. So create an initializer with the result, questions, and correct answers. Yeah. And if we do this, we can get rid of these properties. Yes. The magic here is that this type is a struct. So you get an initializer for free. But if you are changing yes. the properties, this changes the initializer as well, which breaks the client. But if you create an initializer with the same API we had before, it won't break the clients. But of course, it's going to break internally. So what we can do yeah. here to make those things private. Yeah, for now. For now. And I just want to see if this compiles. Yeah, it should. OK, I'm going to call this correct answers to for now. Okay, so now we just need to create our new types here. Yes. User answers equals the result answers mapped. So we get here a tuple, question answer, and we can return the tuple, question answer. Yeah. Okay, so why don't we just return the value itself? Would this work? Yeah, it should. It does. Fantastic. Now the same thing for the correct answers, but now we use the correct answers, that is also a dictionary of question and answers. Mm -hmm. We can also map this, and we need a scorer. And we can use just the basic score for now, which means we don't need this old API. Yeah, we're gonna have some build errors, but let's leave the compiler guide us. And we can only do this with confidence because we have the unit tests. Yeah, exactly. So this score now, is not result of score. So we can have a, some sort of computed var. So score is an integer. Yeah. yeah. And it's the result of invoking the scorer yeah. with user answers and correct answers to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we can make it private as well. This doesn't need to be exposed to the outside world. Great. So we don't need to call these correct answers to anymore. This can be just correct answers, right? Yeah. Seems like it. Maybe we can use self there. Okay. What about this count here? Right, well, this is the answers count, right? So user answers count. Yeah. So the scorer, I think, Xcode complains because 
the user answers is an array of tuples, I think we need to map just the answers. We only want to compare the answers, not the questions. Right. Map zero dot answers and correct answers dot map, the same thing. Yeah. Okay. What else do we need to change here in the implementation? We don't have questions anymore. Yeah. So we need two things here, a user answer and a correct answer. Mm -hmm. So we need to map both arrays. We can probably zip. Yeah. We zip user answers and the correct answers. Well, zip. Mm -hmm. We don't even need this fatal error anymore. Right. So what is the question? It's the user answer dot question. Yeah. User answer dot answers and correct answer dot answers. Okay. We can build now. It's going to be pretty, pretty incredible if the test pass. Let's see doesn't. Okay. What is it? We don't use this core anymore. Right. So maybe we shouldn't use this scoring function. Right. Why don't we return result.score? Yeah, that's a good intermediate step there. So we are not calculating the score yet with the basic function, just to keep the behavior as is. Yeah. This fixed the problem with the score, but now other tests are failing. And it is because of order. We care about the order, and it got the inverted mm -hmm. order. The question two right. was first. Okay, so that's why it's good to have unit tests. Yeah. We would have a bug here if we didn't fix this. It's because dictionaries don't have order. Yeah. How were we guaranteeing order before? Oh, with the array of questions. That's it. So why don't we map the array of questions instead? Yeah. And now we have our question. And then we can have a tuple of question and result dot answers of question. Yeah, that should do it. And we can do the same thing for the correct answers, but let's use the correct answers instead. Let's see. I think that should do it. Fantastic. The test guiding us to do the correct thing. Perfect. Excellent. Now let's go back to the presenter and we update it the API without breaking the clients. Yeah. So we can update the modules that create the results presenter yeah. to use this new API. And then when everything is migrated, we can remove this. Yeah, exactly. We prove that we maintain the same behavior with this new API. Right. So since this presenter now has some sort of business logic, I think it's not a struct anymore, you know. Uh, for me, this is not data. I think it's a much suitable candidate for a final class. Yeah, before we had only data, now we have a reference type, the closure. Yeah. Okay, would this break something if we make it a final class? Everything is passing, everything should be fine. And we, we can even make the properties private. Yeah, it's passing. And I think we're done. Yeah. Commit. Create new results presenter APIs, maintaining backward compatibility. Right. Let's add it to the list. Mm -hmm. Remove results presenter deprecated initializer. Yep. Let's stop here. Mm -hmm. The highlight was that we changed the whole implementation of this component. And two things happened, which for me, this is just magical. Not even one other place in the project complained about this change. Apart from the test. <laughs> Apart from the test, But because we implemented right? it wrong, and the test just told us, hey, this is wrong, fix it. Yeah, exactly. So that was the second one for me. You know, the fact that the test, it wasn't something that prevented us from doing this change, right? So this is the power of modular design. We had established a very nice contract there. Uh, with the rest of the system, we did not have to change that. We only changed the guts of the system. Yes. So I think next we can introduce the new initializer mm -hmm. with these new properties and start migrating. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. See you next time. See you next time. Bye all.